Hey, I'm Eric Dreyer, and thank you so much for your time. Thanks for participating in Mac DevOps YVR, but you already heard me say that. Uh, there has never been a better time to be an Apple admin. We've got 30 minutes uh, for me to share some thoughts and then for some Q&A in Discord. Um, what I plan to talk about is why I'm so excited uh, and then get into a little bit of advice and encouragement to keep delivering great user experiences uh, and keep growing the community. Yes, things aren't as good as they could be. Yes, Apple removed Python. Apple removed Python and Mac OS 12.3, a point release to an operating system. Uh, that caused uh, me to scramble a little bit. Maybe it caused you to scramble a little bit. Yes, Apple said it's coming. Apple said, gave us plenty of warning. Um, but I think a lot of people thought, well, maybe at a major OS, uh, like in the fall was when they would finally yank Python. Um, but it was uh, in the spring uh, with Mac OS 12.3. Yes, Apple keeps locking down the Mac, which takes away tools and processes and workflows that we are accustomed to using. Yeah, that makes things harder. Yes, Apple is turning the screws, making sure that you use MDM. Yeah, no, these things, these are challenges for sure. But the Apple hardware is amazing. We hosted a panel event last week. It, during the context of that panel, um, one of the things that we, that we discussed was how organizations are embracing Apple devices. Uh, ben Baharan, who's been doing research with enterprise for years and years, uh, mentioned that uh, it's COVID-19, uh, that COVID-19 rushed forward uh, the digital acceleration and digital transformation, people working from home, um, and everyone rethinking the way that they're using cloud services. Um, and he said that security in their in his research, security is the one area where there's basically an open checkbook uh, that organizations are saying, this is super important. Uh, we need to make sure that our devices are secure, our information is secure, uh, and um, this opens up uh, this opens up a lot for us as Apple admins uh, to to help our organizations uh, use Apple devices in a secure way. Um, so th the alignment of Apple IT and security uh, is making our jobs as Apple admins um, under more scrutiny, under more focus, and hopefully uh, under more uh, have more. Uh, have more resources available. Uh, in addition to Apple having just amazing hardware um, and enterprises adopting uh, Apple hardware, uh, both from user demand and from uh, top down, so both bottom up and top down, um, Apple is laying some great foundations for that security, especially of Mac. Uh, you may have heard that Apple is trying to make Mac as secure as iPhone. Um, seven years ago uh, at Mac DevOps YVR, Michael Lynn shared a great story about Macnarok. Uh, it's a play on the Norse idea of Ragnarok, the end times, because it seemed like Apple's turning the screws of security was removing our workflows. Um, it seemed like the end of times. Michael Lynn is a great storyteller, and I encourage you to go back to that YouTube video from Mac DevOps YVR 2017. It was only five years ago. Um, go to the okay. So in 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 the in his YouTube, I took a couple screenshots. Um, he talks. He he illustrates all of the security features of various levels of various versions of, of Mac OS. Uh, and uh, talks about the, 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 the correlation between the Norse mythology of Ragnarok and the Apple Magnarok, the end of times. Um, I love how he takes these three roosters and identifies 
4, 10, 10, 10, 11, and 12, what, what these roosters are that are, that are calling Apple admins to, uh, to the end of times, to, to, to adjust our workflows and be ready for, uh, for, for the end of times. Uh, and after the great battle, uh, Heimdallar blows his giant horn and, and all the dead get up and, and uh, it's, it's a rebirth. And so we've got, uh, he, he identified really crucial things that are now, just now it, with, a, with last week's WWDC, uh, the importance of, of activation and, and Mac, and, and, I'll, and I'll get to that. Uh, but this was five years ago. This was thinking about the future from five years ago. Um, he highlighted the, the tweet from Deploy Studio. For those of you new uh, to, uh, to Mac DevOps, for those of you new to uh, the, uh, administering Apple, uh, we used to use a, a, a free tool called Deploy Studio that was used to reimage Mac computers, um, to uh, take a Mac, return it to service, uh, erase it, lay down an operating system, lay down all the, the, the packages and, and configurations. Um, and the creators of, of Deploy Studio, this was back in 2017 saying, hey, I, I bet that system imaging is gonna end with APFS. Uh, you should focus on DEP, MDM, and loosely coupled directory integration. Um, the directory integration piece, again, super, super important, especially in the context of, of last week's WWDC. And Mike ended saying that although the increased focus on security killed some of our workflows, it's also the dawning of the birth of new workflows. And these workflows have been coming together from you uh, from places like the conferences that, that we're attending, the talks that we're going to, uh, IRC, Slack, the, the community that we've built. Uh, we've come together to share our knowledge, to share our frustrations. Uh, and um, just want to thank you for, for being here today, for, uh, for watching this video after the fact, uh, for those of you who aren't, aren't live right now. At the end of the video, there is a question from the audience. Ha ha, iTunes is gonna install Mac OS. Uh, or it, actually the question was, is, configure, is Configurator gonna be used to install Mac OS? Uh, and the answer was, well, actually my joke was that it, was, it would be iTunes that's going to install Mac OS. Well, uh, and then also uh, a little bit about enterprise workflows and that Apple doesn't have the mechanism in place to validate the enterprise workflows that we like to use. Well, it turns out that uh, with Mac computers at Apple Silicon, we can use Configurator uh, to reinstall the entire operating system, to, to take a Mac, put it in DFU mode uh, and restore. Uh, restore all the partitions, all the, all the APFS volumes, the hidden volumes, the restore volume, the, the system, the data. Um, and I just want to make a plug for the IPSW.me website here, uh, which allows you to uh, pick what kind of device that you want to restore. Uh, and it has a link to Apple's download of the IPSW. Um, I always double check. I, I copy the link. And that, this is just me. I copy the link from Apple and download it from, from that link. Um, last year, uh, Apple said, hey, we've got this new way of uh, adding Mac computers to your Apple School Manager or Apple Business Manager. And it, it is Apple Configurator for iOS. The graphics here uh, are, they do a great job of explaining what's going on here. Uh, bring an iPhone near a Mac in Setup Assistant and then wirelessly add a Mac to Apple Business Manager or Apple School Manager. I'm really amused by uh, the reviews, especially this one that says, hey, this is a much needed tool. Now please support iOS. Well, it, it took a year, but uh, basically um, at last week, Apple said Apple Configurator for iOS will now be able to, uh, to add your iOS or iPad OS devices to your Apple School Manager or Apple Business Manager. Um, so I said, there's never been a better time to be an Apple admin and we can see the future. And, and I think from 23 years of, of 
explaining Apple technology and teaching in the classroom and writing books and, and giving talks and, and being in the trenches and, and being frustrated with, with the tools that Apple gives us. It feels like working in the Apple ecosystem is always gonna be frustrating. It feels like there's that vision of what's to come. And if we can only get to that point in the future, uh, then our job will be that much easier. And I think about how with APFS and when Apple first separated out the system APFS container from the, oh, the, system, the system APFS volume from the data APFS volume within that same container. Uh, one of the first things I did was because I wanted the erase all content and settings behavior for, for iOS and iPadOS, I started in macOS recovery. I opened up disk utility and I deleted the APFS data volume, hoping, hoping naively, I knew it was a, a naive hope, but I hoped that when I restarted, that it would start back up and, and show me that, that language picker uh, and that something internal would automatically rebuild that, that APFS data volume. Well, what I saw was a flashing question mark instead of that welcome screen. Um, and it took a couple iterations of macOS before we finally had erase all content and settings on macOS Monterey. It's been less than a year since uh, we've been able to use erase all content and settings in macOS Monterey. And it feels like it's always been there. It's hard to remember the way before time. It's hard to remember how hard it was uh, to, to get a version of macOS back onto a device, kind of out of the box. Uh, I, I mentioned the other part of, of that question uh, or the answer to that question at the end of, of the MacNarok presentation was uh, that Apple doesn't have work, that Apple doesn't have a way of, of validating enterprise workflows, uh, which made us all uh, that take care of Apple devices for organizations made us feel kind of left out in the cold. Well, imagine how exciting it was uh, to see back in November uh, when, and in this case, this is in the Mac admin Slack and the jobs board, Robert Hammond posted, hey, there's this job uh, uh, and the title is the senior engineering manager for enterprise workflows. Um, right now, if you click that link, it'll take you to a page that you, you have to agree uh, that you have to click an agreement, but then basically it says, hey, there's, there's, this page doesn't exist, the role doesn't exist or is no longer available. Um, in April, April 25th, less than two full months ago, super, super recent, uh, Victor announced that, Victor on, on Twitter announced that he is joining uh, the senior automation, uh, he's joining as a senior automation engineer on the enterprise workflows team. This is really, really exciting. Um, and I can't wait to see what this team is able to do. Um, they're just getting spun up. Um, so give them a chance to, to, to get their tools in place and uh, get their processes in place. But um, I'm, I'm super excited about that. I, I couldn't find, I couldn't quickly find a public announcement from Eric J. Boyd about him joining Apple Enterprise Workflows team. but. Here's a Mac admin Slack post from him when he was organizing a private channel, maybe not organizing, but facilitating a private channel in Mac admin Slack for discussion of Appleseed. So first of all, if you'd like to join that channel, uh, follow the directions in the Appleseed channel of Mac admin Slack. Basically take a screenshot, uh, send it to Eric. Maybe the, the directions are, are, are different now. Um, but once you do that, uh, you'll be able to join a private Slack channel where we can all discuss uh, the new betas without fear of uh, breaking our NDAs, without as much fear of breaking our NDAs. And second of all, uh, let me wish Eric, Victor, and the entire Apple Enterprise Workflows team uh, the best of luck and Thank you for, for doing this and for being a voice within Apple uh, to help make our workflows uh, 
to help make Apple aware of, of the workflows that we need in order to support Apple's customers. We're, looking, we're all looking forward to seeing uh, what comes out of that. The third reason why I'm really excited, uh, even though Apple's removed Python and MDM is required, and, and all, all, the, all the bad things, or all the, the challenging things, is that we have a great community. There's so many conferences, there's so many places where we're all helping each other. Um, I went on the Discord, uh, and I'm, I'm new to Discord. Uh, yesterday uh, was the soft launch of Mac DevOps. It was kind of the demo days. Uh, it was awesome. Uh, it gave everyone a chance to, or not everybody, it gave people a chance to, to make sure that they can to get into Discord. Uh, and you know, for, for me, I, I joined Discord last year for, uh, the, uh, for, the, for Patrick Wardle's Objective by the Sea Conference. Uh, and that was, that was great. Uh, it was a great conference. It was great to see people. Um, and uh, looking forward to the next version in October. Uh, I'm not going to be able to make it there in person, but looking forward to that. Uh, the point that I was trying to make was Discord is a new tool. And yesterday, someone said, uh, new things are terrifying. And it's true, new things are terrifying, um, but we need to embrace them. We need to learn these new tools. Um, and if you're like me, your role is probably around explaining new things to your users and making new things available to your users. But I did a search in Discord for the word first, and I came up with, uh, all these people who in the introductions channel uh, saying, do, doing their introduction and saying that this is their first time uh, at Mac DevOps YVR. Uh, and it's amazing that every year there's new people, new faces, new energy uh, that join these conferences and join these communities. And you get people like Duan here and hi Duan, welcome to Mac DevOps. Um, this is my first year too, it's great to see you. Uh, we've got Hamish, Phil, Sean, Justin, Harold, AJ, Wylan, Robert Ryans, and how excited am I to see my teammate, Daniel Chapa uh, here. Hey, Daniel, so awesome to see you. I, I mentioned that I used to spend a lot of time delivering training in the classroom, and I miss that time. I miss being able to spend two or three days really getting to know people, uh, listening to the problems that they're seeing in their organization, watching them learn new workflows, watching them uh, share information with other people in the classroom, watching them uh, take their expertise that they already have and kind of organize it in a different way. Uh, there's plenty of people who take training that already know the stuff and could probably teach the course, but getting into a training situation allows them to put all other things aside and really focus on the problem at hand. So I, I missed in-person classroom training um, and I was really, really excited to see uh, this Apple newsroom announcement. And this is less than a full month ago. This was May 18th, 2022. Uh, so Apple newsroom, there's this announcement about these two new courses. Uh, there's Apple device support, there's deployment and management. Um, these courses look so good. Uh, they're full of great information. Um, of course, there's room for improvement. There's always room for improvement, um, but really excited to see the work of uh, a lot of the people that I know that, that, that put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into these, uh, into these courses. It's been a long time coming and it's super exciting uh, to see them uh, online and available. Oh, and here tucked into the announcement was Apple letting the cat out of the bag about the Mac Edmonds Foundation. Um, love this quote here that one of the main tenets of the Mac Edmonds Foundation is to expand the profession and maintain affordable access to all community resources. So you'll hear more about the Mac Edmonds Foundation later on. Um, I just want to, uh, to encourage you to find out more about it. 
Kanji is a founding sponsor of the Mac Admins Foundation. I'm super proud of that. Uh, and if you want to show your support for the Mac Admins Foundation, uh, you can use this link, macadmins.org slash donate dash two dash MAF. But maybe I should get back to this keynote. Uh, it's been almost 20 minutes so far. Um, there's never been a better time to be an Apple admin. I, I wanna help you make the most of being an Apple admin and think about how you can keep delivering great experiences uh, and keep growing the community, keep benefiting from the community and, and giving back to the community. I can't tell you how good it feels when someone tells me, Eric, I met you at a conference and you just talked to me like I was a regular person. Uh, and really encouraged me to, to grow in the profession and encouraged me to, uh, to share what I know. And then see those people later on uh, in really prominent positions uh, and, and sharing uh, their, their knowledge with the community. It's, it's, it's really awesome. And, and I encourage you to, uh, to help the next generation, to help the people that, that are, are new to the community uh, as the community grows. Really excited about WWDC last year, w, not last year, last week, WWDC 2022 was super exciting for Apple admins. It's exciting for developers, exciting for consumers. Um, I recommend that you use the developer app. Uh, one of the cool things about the developer app is that it has the transcript button. Um, so you can search in transcripts and when you click text, in the transcript, it jumps the video to that portion of, uh, of, the, of the video, of the session. Super useful. A couple days ago uh, at Kanji and the Kanji blog, we posted our top 10 picks of announcements that are relevant to Apple admins. I encourage you to check that out. Uh, since I don't have much time left, I'd want to take a look at six, uh, declarative management. Um, uh, declarative management is super, uh, super exciting. Um, it was announced or introduced last year. It was limited to iOS and iPadOS with user enrollment footprint. Um, not a lot of people are using user enrollment. Let's just make sure we're on, on the same page here. So uh, Apple defines three enrollment methods. There's automated device enrollment, for those of you that are looking at old documentation, old talks, people talk about the device enrollment program or DEP or DEP. Apple now refers to that, to that as automated device enrollment. This is where a device that an organization has purchased through the appropriate channels or has used configurator to get that device uh, into Apple Business Manager, Apple School Manager. Basically the device says, hey, uh, on power up, on, once it sees the network, Here's a, a remote management system, uh, remote, remote management solution that this device needs to be a part of. At WWDC last year, Apple used this term that I really like. I'm really psyched about it. It's called profile-based device enrollment. Uh, and that reflects that a user would have to navigate to somewhere, download uh, a, a profile to enroll with that, uh, with that MDM solution, install the profile, uh, in order to enroll with that MDM solution. This is uh, for organizationally owned devices that for one reason or another aren't using automated device enrollment. And that third uh, method is user enrollment. And user enrollment is for BYOD, for bring your own device. Uh, and its uh, purpose uh, is to uh, allow a personally owned device to to interact with the organization's MDM, but that MDM to not have full control of the device. There are some limitations with that. Like uh, you, uh, no matter what kind of passcode policy you set for iOS, uh, it's uh, limited, it's only gonna enforce a six digit passcode. So if you say I need a 12 digit passcode, if it's user enrolled, it, it's limited to, to, to six, uh, six digits. Uh, so, this year at WWDC, so that's all old history. So this year, at w, it's old history. This is just a, barely a year ago. So this year at WWDC, Apple opened it up to all platforms, not just iOS and iPadOS, but also 
uh, basically any Apple platform and all enrollment types. Um, so that was really exciting. Um, at Kanji, we focus on helping you get your device to a known good state, a desired end state. And um, we're super excited about the way that declarative management works with that model of telling the device, hey, here's how I want you configured. And based on how uh, things change, how, how uh, the conditions uh, change, the configurations change, well, your passcode policy, this is how you should uh, configure yourself. So super excited about that. Um, and I don't know if this could be any more clear from Apple during that session. The future, the focus of future protocol features will be declarative device management. Declarative device management is a portion of MDM. Uh, it's not a replacement for MDM, uh, which is kind of confusing because when you look at the, the sessions, you'll see things labeled as MDM server, but you'll also see uh, that the MDM server provides declarative management, but you'll also see um, slides about, you know, here's legacy MDM uh, behavior. Let's get away from that legacy behavior. Uh, also uh, is one of the other six things that I wanted to, to, to talk about with single sign-on. Um, and look, Joel's going to talk about single sign-on later on today. Um, Endpoint security API, I'm sure that someone else is going to do a better job of, of covering endpoint security API. Attestation for iOS and iPadOS, oh my gosh, super. This is a, another example of like, hey, in the future, like I see, see a, a great future. So all of these things, they're not ready today, but that perfect future down the road. Uh, attestation, uh, using the secure enclave, super exciting. Software updates, I mean, we've we've bashed software update. We've had lots of problems over the past few years as Apple's changing the way that software updates are delivered. Um, during the Mac AD UK session, Weldon Dodd and Nick McDonald from Kanji gave a great talk about automation uh, and um, using software update as, as, as an example. Um, I want to encourage you as you, and in that session from Mac AD UK, uh, Nick and Weldon do a great job of encouraging you to uh, abstract away uh, complication from your users. So when your users are, uh, whether they have an Intel or an Apple Silicon device, the user experience should be the same. They shouldn't have to worry about uh, the complications. That's something that you and your solutions should take care of. Uh, and wanted to spend more time talking about that, but um, running short because I keep talking about other things. Um, I, I do uh, want to encourage you to keep delivering great user experiences. Um, and I want to encourage you to keep building the community. Um, I would go as far to say that white men are overrepresented in the Apple admin community and we're, we're trying uh, various things to, to change that, to in increase inclusion. We don't want to exclude anyone. We want to increase, uh, increase participation, grow, grow the community. Um, and let me, let me go back. Uh, one of the, the books that I just finished reading um, was uh, The Authority Gap. She does a great job of showing, of, of illustrating the authority gap uh, that society has between men and women and how much more often women are interrupted than men in meetings and all the different things that, that are uh, surrounding that. Um, I actually didn't read it. I bought it on audiobook and had a professional read it to me um, because I found that reading the, the printed pages is, is difficult um, for, for whatever reason and that listening to an audiobook is, is much, much easier. Um, so I'm kind of out of time. Um, I want to just wrap up and, and say that, uh, I, again, there's, there's never been a better time to be an Apple admin. You're here to learn some really awesome workflows. Here's some great perspective from, uh, from our colleagues. I'm so thankful that they've invested the time to prepare, uh, to put aside other things, to be here, to be present. For you that are watching this right now, watching it in the future, thank you so much for lending your attention in this busy time. There's just so many things that are vying for our attention. Um, 
And again, uh, what I shared in this brief session was what I'm excited about, uh, all the things about WWDC, the foundation that Apple's laying down. Um, I encourage you to keep delivering great user experiences uh, and keep growing the community. Um, so with that, um, we're out of time. Please uh, hit me up on Discord for additional questions. Um, and, and I look forward to uh, getting out of this Zoom, hopping into Discord and seeing the rest of, of today's sessions. So thank you so much.